In this video, we're going to talk about some simple math formulas that can help you with your game development. So in this example, I'm showing how we can move two objects, such as these buses, to a destination. But they reach it at different times because they're basing their movement on their speed. But as you can see here, if we modify it, we can actually change it where no matter how far away the buses are, they're both going to reach the intersection at the exact same time. Now I'm just going to show a few other quick examples here where you can use this. So in this memory card matching game, whenever the cards match, I have the objects fly off into the middle of the screen and they're going to merge at the same time, no matter how far away they are. And this other example I have here is just a little 2D game I was playing around with where I made a circle with a bunch of other smaller ones connected with lines. And when you click on it, they all merge at the same time in the center. So these are just a few quick examples I have here. Um, some other things you can take out of this too is you can use this for other things too, not just distance. So you could do liquid, like how many liters per minute it flows, how long it takes a planet to spin on its axis. You can use it for interface things like filling a progress bar or filling a radial bar, tracking fuel economy in a vehicle, anything like that. The one thing you have to do with this though is use linear values. So you, you can't change the speed while you're moving or this method is not going to work. This is just a very simple introduction to these formulas. So if you want to start getting more advanced, then you would need to build off of this. But this should get your foot in the door and get you adjusted to using these. Okay, so let's talk about these formulas. It's actually really just one formula and we just relocate where each variable is inside of it. So we can use this to track the rate or how fast something is moving. And to get that, you just need to divide the distance over how long it took to reach that distance. To get the actual distance, you would just want to take the speed or the rate that it's moving and multiply it by how long it took. And then to get the time, you want to use distance and divide that by how long it took. Now I'm going to show quick examples of all three of these here so you know how to use them. So let's talk about the first part of this formula, which is rate equals distance divided by time. So to demonstrate how we can use this one in an example here, I'm going to use the two buses and I'm going to first make a simple script that makes them move using a speed variable to this point. So let's do that here. I'm just going to create a new script. I'll just call this mover. And now I'm going to make a serialized field, a private float. I'm just going to call this move speed. And I'll set this to five. So this is a standard way of how you're going to make a lot of objects move. So in update, all I'm going to do is I'll do transform.position equals vector three dot move towards. I'm going to take its transform.position and then we need a destination to go to. So I'm going to make a serialized field here. I'll do a private transform. I'll just call this destination transform. So let's put that in here. Destination transform dot position. And then for the speed, I'm going to want to use move speed times time dot delta time. So this is just a simple way for our object to constantly move to its destination with a speed of five. So I'm going to apply the same script to both buses here. And we'll leave that set. And then for the destination, I'm just going to make one here. Let's just make a sphere. Reset this. And I'm just going to put it somewhere here. So it's kind of at the stop line. Remember the pivot of the bus is going to be near the middle. So I'm going to make one here. I'm going to duplicate it and move one up here. Now you could make them both move to the same object, but then they would both go to here and merge in the same lane. So I want both of them to stop at the same X position, which is right about here, but they're going to be on their own Z. So they're going to stay in each of their lanes. So I'm just going to rename these. I'll call this school destination. And I'll call the other one transit destination. So now I'm going to drag those into the destination here. So here's the transit one. And here's the school one. So now with the speed of five, if I run this, both buses are going to move to this object with a speed of five. So obviously this bus is going to get there first because it's closer. 
but we have the general principle in place here. So now we need to change it where they're going to move to end up here at the same time. So if we set it to say move them at two seconds to reach here, both of them are going to move to reach here at two seconds, but their speed to get there is going to be much lower on the school bus than it is on the transit because it's got a further distance. So let's go back into our script and we'll see how we can do this here. Now, since we're moving to time instead of speed, we're going to figure out the speed automatically. So I'm going to remove that one and I'm just going to call this, I'll call it time to target and we'll set it to two seconds. So this is going to be how long it takes to reach that target. We'll keep the destination and now this time we need to calculate the speed when we start. So we are actually going to need a speed variable, but we don't need to make it serialized. So I'm just going to make private float. I'm just going to call it speed. And now to get the speed that this object needs to move to reach our target in two seconds, that's where we're going to use that formula. So we need rate, which is going to be our speed. So we can do speed here. So this is our rate. And then it's going to equal, which is the distance. So to get the distance, we want to use vector three dot distance. And we need to get the distance between the current object and our target, which is going to be our destination transform dot position. So that's the distance we have to move to reach our target. And then we want to divide that by the, the amount of time, which is going to be our time to target. So now if we look at the initial formula, so we do it here, which is going to be rate equals distance divided by time. So we can correlate each one. So our speed is our rate, our distance is the distance between us and the target, and then time is how long to reach the target. So now we have the speed. All we have to do is replace that in here. So now we're going to use this speed. And if we go and run this now, we're going to see both of our buses go at the same destination at two seconds. So you can see this bus moved a lot faster. And now the thing with this is if we select these two and right now we have them set to two seconds, we can change it to be five seconds. Now they're going to move slower, but they're still going to reach the destination at five seconds together. Okay. So that's the first part of the formula. Now we're going to move on to the second way to use that formula, which is going to be getting distance which is using rate times time. So to do this, let's go back to our script here. And this is going to allow us to track how far the object has moved. And you may be thinking it may be easier just to use something like vector three dot distance, like we did here to move between the points, which would work if it was in a straight line that we're moving the object. But say if we use a car and we move it, we make them turn corners and move in a diagonal line and then go back to the left and then back to the right. You couldn't use the distance between the two points because the car was constantly moving. Whereas if we use this formula, all we have to do is plug in how fast the car was moving and for how long, and it's going to calculate the distance that it actually traveled. And as I mentioned earlier, this does have to use linear speeds. So you can only use basically one speed for this method. But if you wanted to track multiple speeds, so if the car was moving different speeds down different roads, you could still do that. You would just have to add more complicated math to this formula. So this is just to get you started and get your foot in the door of how to use these kind of formulas. So the takeaway here is to make sure for these that you're using a steady speed for the whole time. Okay, so let's try this one out. What we need to do is track the amount of time so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use a variable here. It's just going to be a float and I'm going to call this start time. And now what I want to do is I want to make start time be equal to time dot time. So in this case, because we're running this right and start at the start of our game, it's going to be very close to zero. But say if you were triggering this sometime throughout your game, you know, you press space and then the car moves. You need to be able to track when the car started moving so we know how long it moved for. Okay, and now with that, we don't need to change how the, the car is moving or the bus. We're going to let it keep moving, but we're going to want to output what the distance traveled is so far. I'm going to output this on every frame. So all we have to do here is I'm going to do a debug.log. And what we want to debug is the formula we talked about. So this formula is very similar to this one. We just move where the values are. So we want to do 
distance equals rate times time. So what we're going to do is, you know what, just for the sake of it, I'll just make a variable here. We'll make a float and I'll call this, we'll just call this distance. And it's going to be equal to, so our rate is going to be our speed. So we take this speed variable here. So it's speed. And then we times it by how long the, the bus has been moving. So to get that, what we want to do is we want to take the current time, which is time dot time. And then from that, we want to subtract our start time. So this is going to give us how long it took. Basically, this is going to say, say if the game was running at 10 seconds when you started moving. So this start time would be 10. And then say if the car stopped at 15 seconds. So this time dot time would be 15. And then we subtract 10 from it, which gives us fives. So five seconds. And now if we debug.log distance, okay, so this is going to output the distance. The thing is, we're never telling it that the bus reached the destination, so it's going to constantly output this. So we do need to just kind of make a flag here. So here to check that, I'm just going to do a vector three dot distance. I'm going to take transform.position, our destination transform.position is greater than, I'll do 0.01 F. So basically, so basically if we're further than 0.01 F away from the target, we're gonna output our distance. That way, once we actually reach the target, it's gonna stop. Because otherwise we'll, we'll just keep outputting that. Okay, so now we have the two buses. They're gonna move for five seconds and let's see what the distance is. So if we look at it here, you see both buses are traveling. And as you can see, the transit bus distance is higher because he's moving at a faster speed. So we got 38 and 16. And looking back here, the reason we wanted to use the automatically calculated speed is because if we hard coded that speed in and then we changed how long it took to reach to the target, so if we change this from two seconds to something else, that wouldn't give us the right number. So we still have to do this check on the speed here. So just to demonstrate that, let's select the two buses. I'm gonna change this to be two seconds. So they're gonna move much faster now. See, and if we look, we still have very close to the same numbers. So 16 and just about 38. So even though they move faster, they're still traveling the same distance. This will take that into account. Okay, and now the last part of that formula is gonna be time equals distance divided by rate. So just to show this one, I'm actually just gonna delete everything in here, kind of start from scratch and show this one. So this is very similar to your typical, you know, school math problem where you always hear the the question of something like, you know, a train leaves a station heading at a certain speed and the next station is X distance away. How long will it take the train to get there? That's what we're going to do with this formula here. So we're going to go back just like we had on the very first part here where we weren't taking in any of the formulas. We're just going to do transform to position equals vector three dot move towards. And I just need to make those variables again. So we'll do private float speed. I'll do five. And then we need to get a reference again to our object. I shouldn't have removed that one, but too late. So we'll do destination transform. Okay, so we're gonna do move towards. We're gonna go to our destination transform.position. Then we're going to use speed times time dot delta time. I just have to drag these back in. Okay, so just like we had before, now they're going to move, but they're not moving at the same speed. That's fine. Okay, and we're just going to do this one in start. So basically right when they start moving, we're going to output how long it's going to take to reach that target. So in here we want to do, so it's time equals distance divided by rate. 
Okay, so again, I'll just make a quick variable here. We'll make a float. I'm just gonna call this underscore time. Actually, we don't even need that. I'm gonna call this time to reach target. Okay, and we wanna equal this to be the distance. So we're gonna do vector three dot distance. We wanna go from our current position. So transform dot position to our target dot position. Okay, and then we want to divide it by the, the rate, which is our speed. Okay, and then now I'm just gonna debug.log. Whoops. We'll do debug.log and time to reach target. So now they are gonna reach the target at different times here because they're different distances away. So if we look in the console, we see one is gonna take 3.3 seconds, one's gonna take 7.6. Okay, and now if we change these, so say the transit bus is gonna take two seconds to get there, it's gonna move really fast, and the school bus is gonna take six. So if we run this again now, okay, so you can see the transit bus is gonna take 19 seconds, and the school bus took 2.7. Okay, so there's three different ways to use that formula. It's all kind of one formula with different ways to use it. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's lots of different ways you can use this. So, you know, things like not just distance, but liquid flowing, how many liters per minute it'll take to flow, how long does a planet take to spin on its axis. Um, you can use this for user interface objects, like fill in a progress bar, a radial bar, um, tracking fuel economy in a car. For uh, something like a space game, you could track how long it takes to fill up or lose all the oxygen in a room. And all of those different things, that's all the same formulas here. The only thing to remember is this is the very basics of it. So you have to keep a, a linear or the same value throughout. So the same speed value. You can't be changing it constantly or this formula won't know how to track it. But if you get to that point using this formula, this is kind of your basic stepping stone to get to that point, and then you can make it a bit more advanced. Okay, so I hope that helped you out. If you have any questions or comments about this or other videos on similar topics, please leave a comment below, and I will see you in the next video.